Well, throughout the night, mourners have gathered at Oslo Cathedral to remember the victims of Friday's killings. Norway's flag was flown at half-mast. Seven people were killed when a bomb exploded outside a government building in the capital. Police are still digging through the rubble there. That attack happened hours before the killing spree on Utoya Island. We can now go live to Oslo and speak to our correspondent Harry Smith, who's there. Harry, so a confession and new revelations that this massacre was a long time in the planning as a new day breaks over Norway. What's being made of this new information? Well, we expect detectives here in Oslo to resume uh, the process of questioning Breivik in a, a few hours' time. Uh, their suspect is being held uh, here in the city uh, at the police headquarters. Detectives have described this process as, as very challenging. They say Breivik uh, is cooperating, but only in a limited way. Um, for example, he's explained a lot of what happened, uh, but uh, he hasn't uh, confirmed or uh, denied uh, that there was an accomplice. Um, so police haven't yet ruled out the possibility that uh, there could have been a second shooter or someone helping him. Uh, but uh, as you heard, his lawyer says his client will explain fully uh, what he's done and why he's done it uh, when he appears in court here on Monday. Uh, he is due to appear at uh, the main court in uh, Oslo. Uh, it will be a private session behind closed doors. There will be no members of the public. Uh, there will be no reporters, but uh, we hope uh, after that appearance to have more details from the, the police uh, about precisely what happened and, and perhaps some clue to his motive. Uh, in the meantime, detectives are still searching uh, his flat. They say they've located uh, or they've identified the car that was used to bomb, uh, to set off the bomb here in Oslo, and they've identified the car uh, that was used to travel from Oslo to the island. Now, Harry, as you're speaking, they were going to bring up some live pictures of Oslo. Um, it is a new day. A nation is still in shock. We understand that he's being charged with terrorism. What's the idea behind that? Um, well, the, the idea is quite simply that this is... Uh, how else would you explain it? This is uh, um, a, a, a horrendous act. Uh, more than 90 dead. Um, and uh, the, the, the police... Um, clearly have to frame the charges accordingly. I'm not quite sure how that translates uh, from the Norwegian, uh, but um, the death of more than 90 people, it's very difficult to describe it in any other way. Mm -hmm. And Harry, overnight there was a candlelit vigil and today there seems to be a tribute plan. Can you tell us what people are doing? Well, as you say, there has been a candlelit vigil overnight. Um, uh, people just, I think, want to come out and somehow try to express what they feel. Um, many of them are, are trying to express uh, feelings for people who've died who they, who they never met. It's a, a great shock, I think, to everyone in this, uh, because you've heard from the Prime Minister Stoltenberg, this is a, a small country, uh, and people, I think, identify with those who are now grieving for the loss of, uh, of, of young, uh, young loved ones. Uh, later today in the main cathedral, we uh, are told there will be uh, a service, uh, a memorial service. Now, this is something that would happen anyway, because this is Sunday in Oslo, but uh, this will be rather different. Uh, this will be a national National memorial service. Uh, we'll have uh, Norway's king and queen uh, will be there along with uh, Prime Minister Stoltenberg and uh, I think we can expect um, uh, the eyes of uh, all Norway to be on the proceedings in the cathedral here in Oslo. Harry Smith, live for us in Oslo. Harry, thanks.